Hello and welcome to the Six Months to Six Figures series of the W Freelancing Podcast. In this series, you'll spot you'll follow a specific freelancer, in this case, Maya. I'm trying to point at her for the video people, as I coach them from early stages to earning a six-figure annual income. Because if you break it down, hundred thousand dollars a year is essentially eight thousand three hundred and thirty-three dollars a month. So my challenge is to see how quickly I can get somebody from kind of early stages to $8,333 a month. And my challenge is like, do it within six months. Hence, six months to six figures, very catchy. So in this series, I'll connect with Maya every week or two, and it'll follow the same format as the office hours coaching within the DYF accelerator. And that's how these actually all started. So if you're watching these or listening and you find yourself thinking, I wish I could get coaching like this, know that you totally can. You can learn more at dyf.link slash dyfa. Let's dive into today's episode. So you are up first, Maya. Let me pull up these notes. I tried to do a little bit of pre-prep today. So you said scoping the five hours for marketing the studio, et cetera. What's mm -hmm. the, um, the like ideal takeaway from the session? Would it just be a plan for how those five hours would be spent or, or what? Yeah, I I tried a little bit last week. Yeah, I'd love to your guidance on like scoping um what to work on those five hours. But last week I did five hours. I did have them and I got two leads and that was great. Just like in increasing my weekly lead, three leads actually, and one that I acquired. So well, congrats on that. That's dope. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot. Like really, 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 um, really huge step. So that one that you acquired, what revenue does that represent? Um, it's it like a very small project because I'm trying to work on on smaller. Like I have my big core branding, which is 2K, 3K. And then I have my small packages that I'm starting, which is called Strategy Playbook, which is like a two week um, session, just like an intensive for their strategy and like communication strategy, social media strategy. So that one is 660. And it was the first time that I marketed on Instagram and someone like clicked the payment link. There was no clarity call, there was nothing. And it was just like, okay, I wanna work with you. So it literally is the first time that there was no clarity call. And that's called what's it's some something strategy brand strategy playbook. What was it called? Um yeah, content strategy playbook. Content strategy playbook. Mm -hmm. And do you use this as road mapping? Like once they do this yeah. with you, you upsell? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I actually, yeah, like from uh, some newsletter of you guys, I read the concept of road mapping and I was like, oh great. Because I don't, yeah, it's really difficult for me to like work with a big project when it really like there's no strategy and there's no yeah. like familiarity so this is my road mapping i have two cool. road mappings it's the playbook or either like creative mentorship that i'm like really testing right now um but they're like low price containers that then can like an i can upsell into like um the actual core branding and so this road mapping for 660 would go into a 3k core branding project is the idea mm -hmm. Yeah. I also like I've realized that I found like a niche that is like creators like me, like I spent like five years without a brand, without a logo, you know, without a studio, like in a really slashy face um, and it worked. So I think that people really need to go through their slashy face. And I don't want someone like me to be like, oh, yeah, pay three Ks for a branding that you're never going to use. It's more like I want to give you the tools that you actually need. So I feel like this pre um, core branding, it's a great way to actually give them clarity on like, okay, mm. this is what the branding would look like. Do you know, so I have a friend named Joanna Galvao. Do you know her? Okay. Well, I'm going to have her on soon. I think you'll find that interview really interesting. She runs like a, a design branding agency. And I met her at like an internet marketing -y kind of event called Tropical Think Tank. She was like another mm -hmm. participant. And she did some really good networking and like does branding. Like she did Lewis Howe's branding and she like, you know, like those sorts of folks. I don't remember who else, but she worked with like other cool names in this space. And like what strikes me with what you're doing is it seems like you're doing like really valuable work for the amount that you're charging, uh, but that presumably your current limiting factors like maybe 
you know, for the 60, 663K, like it's probably kind of newer sub 100K creators or something like where are your current clients yeah. at with revenue? Yeah, I always feel like, um, like, I always feel like I'm a huge investment for my clients. Like, obviously, I'm not um, marketing the right people because I would like to charge more. But I always feel like, you know, even with like 660 payment plans, they have to divide it in two. And I'm torn, right? Because I I understand and I want to work with lower budgets because I feel like that's the people that, that need it the most. Um, but at the same time, I would love to do like a like a coaching like program that is 3K and I meet with them biweekly and, and it's just a bit more, um, yeah, more, uh, more, I don't want to say professional at all, but like a bit more, less junior, less junior. So when you do, because <clears throat> branding, like I'm a layman, I'm ultimately a layman here. So when I think of branding, I think of like logo design brand guide. But I think mm -hmm. that maybe what you're doing goes deeper than that. And you're like helping people determine their brand like identity or something. Yeah. Their why. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. Their message, like the, the the heart of the brand is really like why people resonate with my type of branding and they don't care about my portfolio. They're like, no, I want to work with you because you're like the why person. Cool. Well, that's actually great um, in this case, because let's say you did do logo design. So I'm thinking about, have you watched the interview I did with Kim about her productized business? Mm -mm, you sent it last week, but I okay. didn't watch um, I'm thinking that like that kind of model could work really well for you here because basically what the hook of Kim's productized business as it is now, which she's hitting in, like she's hitting the ceiling for her current business model and she needs to go more leveraged like towards courses. But regardless, her current business model, which is highly leveraged, has each client representing two hours of work per week and she does ongoing work. So she spends eight hours a month per client, charges each client like a thousand euros a month. Um, actually, it might not even be two. No, so I'm sorry. I misrepresented that. It is 30 minutes a week. Well, yeah. So her, I think what I was confusing, her effective hourly rate is like 250 an hour. Um, but the reason it works is because she has this like done with you service where she is essentially doing coaching uh, to educate these junior marketers on how to use themselves more effectively at their businesses. And this like this coaching plus education angle could work really well for you here where um, maybe like the thing I've been coaching Kim on is perhaps making a shift where instead of all of the coaching coming one to one, her having like a course that teaches yeah. the things that are fundamental and then layering the coaching on top of the course. I think that that yeah. could be a really good angle here and i know that that's kind of what you're working towards anyway yeah that is amazing because i do see like i have two types of clients the first one is that someone that's like take my money 3k just do everything the yeah. other one is the one that's like more low budget that's the one that normally wants like a retainer thing and they are designers they are creators like they can they're younger so they can use these programs really quickly and i love that because like training them how to yeah i can do like their you know, social media templates, 20, and then I teach them how to use it. And I teach them how to really communicate online and all that stuff. And then they can do it, but I'm still there for creative mentorship. I'm really interested in that road. So what cool. she's doing, I I'm going to look into it. And the vibe that works well, like in terms of positioning your services as more valuable is that if you, if you have this kind of, this one to many educational program, it allows you to have something low price to help the people who need it most, as you say. Mm -hmm. But it also allows you to still do the one-on-one -on -one work for the more higher budget clients and just kind of raise raise your rates on those mm -hmm. gradually. Yeah, um, that, that's great. I really, I really want to maintain my prices low. Um, to, I really want to help people. Like I know that's not so good for money, but I want to have like two. This is it's my ideal that my branding projects are five k, six k. You know, I'm having two of those clients a month, so I'm set. And then I can offer really affordable um, coaching for creatives for more in a, in, a, in a group setting. So it doesn't take me that long. You know, it doesn't take me, um, it doesn't take out so many hours of my, my life and my other branding work. So right now, when you do one of your core branding projects that you charge two to three K for, what uh -huh. amount of hours does that? cost you for like fulfillment the strategy calls mm -hmm. like what, what's all the hours that go into that for you 
from um, client acquisition, like back and forth email, um, clarity call, strategy calls, until handoff, it would take me around 15 to 20 hours, which is not that if, much, actually. It's pretty quick. And then what if we subtract, like, let's pretend you, because remember last time you were wanting to, like, hone the kind of qualification stuff. So pretend, pretend you were drowning in leads and you like built in so much friction that by the time you get on a clarity call, they're like 99% going to close. Right. So pretend you like didn't spend any time on that. What's the time from like that? Design. But I mean, like what's the hour you said 15 to 20 right now for all of the, uh, strategy, clarity, et cetera, for right now, what would it be if like you didn't faff with a lot of clients that don't close and stuff? Is it like oh, like 15, ten hours, really? 10? I can I can turn around a, a whole like branding, brand identity, like ten social media templates, um, three directions for logo, typography, color. I can really um, turn that around in like ten, twelve hours because I track it. And what takes me the longest is like, and this is where I really, really want to um, hire someone. This is where I want to scale or outsource. The mood boarding and the researching, that part takes me like three hours. And that's the part where I tend to get very distracted. And mm. if I could hire a junior designer, which I've been interviewing and really thinking about, um, for her to give me like five directions, like, hey, these two types are amazing together. This is really like those with the brief of the client. I found this photo. We could try to play with it. That would just make everything so much easier for me. Okay, cool. Maybe you can use AI for that sometime too. Although with visual stuff, it's a lot harder. So yeah, maybe yeah. You I try. I go. try not to, because then I'm gonna get used to. Like I know I'm super like old school um, with the AI. I like it for copywriting, but for design, I feel like I'm gonna get so used to it, and then like it's gonna just be part of my creativity process. Which I'd rather like. I'll, yes, I want to save time, but I also want to like you know use my brain at its max capacity. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think your mood boarding with the junior designer idea is great. Okay. So in terms of product I service offering, this is also cool. Um, and given that it's social media templates that can be used for content marketing, it's close ish to the money, which is cool. I think that there's maybe some stuff to talk about, about packaging at some point, but for now, I just wanted to know what work goes into your current packages. So you said you got three leads from five hours on Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of curious if like, so you said your current lead gen strategy is kind of like people who are maybe more starting out or whatever. Like, do you think right now you have access to leads for whom five or six K for this core branding project would still have a payoff for them? Or do you think you'd have to change your lead source or do you think you'd have to change your service offering? Um, or I think, think I have to uh, change my lead source because of where I source them, which is on Instagram. Um, it's very much like people are like me, you know, like they are still in their slashy phase. Um, they have been working in the field for three years, but they don't have a website, but they want to like consolidate their offer ecosystem. And I do talk a lot about like, like my point of view is very like thought leadership on like, you know, this, like, um, this is what being close to your brand actually means, or this is what, um, you know, my client process is like really behind the scenes. So I'm like, you know, building a design business and it's people that connect with that because they are where I'm at. So I don't know. I feel like I could market myself in other places, but I'm like, I don't have the mental energy to do it on LinkedIn. I, you know, like I have to hire someone for marketing if that's the case. Like, I don't want to do it myself. Hmm. So just to clarify, when you say slashy phase, is that like if I say scrappy? Is that kind yeah, of like, yeah, it's yeah? the same. Yeah, like I'm still like figuring out, still consolidating my offers as I offer them. Still like, you know, every time I have a new client, I tweak something less and less. Less and less is very systemized right now. Yeah. But I'm still um, in that stage of like, oh, maybe next clarity call is 45 minutes. Maybe they yeah. fill up a questionnaire here instead of talking about it. Like, yeah. And there's value to that stage. Like I've been reflecting on how with this community, I've been in that stage, you know, and like trying different things, seeing what works for people, solidifying the things that do, cutting the things that don't, overworking and thus needing to cut some stuff for my own time. Like just this, all that flow stuff that if I had been doing this for a year or two, it would just be 
this is how it yeah. is, but I don't know that yet. And you're finding that. And it sounds like you're close to having that. Mm -hmm. My my thought is that like, so earlier today I had an interview with Jesse who ran a content agency. And what I thought was interesting about his agency was that he was basically doing content writer placements almost as like a recruiter. And he wasn't like close to the money. He wasn't doing value-based pricing. He wasn't doing any of these things because at first he was doing like SEO and stuff and he was trying to do the value-based stuff. But then he ended up honing in on this ultimately commoditized work, but it was for a, a very good price. So like he did well as a commoditized thing. But in your case, like this branding thing, um, it isn't, it's not a commoditized thing. It's like something that you do because you want to do it. And so here's where my head's at. And I, I want to circle this back to make the most of our remaining six minutes for your goals. But like where my head is at is that I'm thinking like, what does an excellent case study look like for Maya? What does an example of a client who like paid her two or three K or paid her five or six K and got a payoff from that? Like, what does that look like? Is there a way that you can tie what you're coaching people on or doing for them to an ROI? Or is it more of an emotional thing? Like, cause that's, what's hard is like, how, how do you phrase something back to brand identity? It's, it's really difficult to do. What do you think on all this? Like if you were to tell me why your work is important, how it benefits a business, like what's the one liner? Um, I think I am a matchstick for a lot of people to start their projects and start sharing their voices out there and really start marketing and growing like the branding. Yeah, sure. It, it helps to have a logo and stuff, but like all the sessions that we do and my strategy workshop and all the like digging into the purpose of the brand really helps them start marketing themselves that like, if I was, I feel like that is the value of what I do. I make people start doing what they've been doing for a while. It really catalyzes possibility the way that I've worked. And I believe in my methodology. I really do believe that starting with the why comes out as a really incredible um, brand that is just close to you. And it's not like this product that you have to find a voice for. It's you. It's you marketing yourself. So that's great. I'm just digesting and I have a lot of different thoughts. Yeah. Um, are, so your typical client would be somebody who's like kind of just getting started and they have like had an idea for a while or they have an existing business that's just not really formalized into a business. That's for, that is for like creative mentorship, content playbook sessions, like my, let's call it um, like road mapping. But my client that signs for my bigger projects is someone that has a business already. Someone that wants to rebrand. I get a lot of rebrands and those are my favorites because they're they're gonna just they're, they're gonna implement they're gonna utilize every single thing that i give them because they already have a shop they already have um you know a business to run so those are like my two types of clients the thing that i'm thinking about with your first type is like i'm imagining if you substitute dyf or an even more successful business like because DIF at this point has a really nice long history we've got revenue we've got courses but we're not as big as we once were so maybe DYF is not a good example, but just like imagine you took a seven figure business and it was like an influencer content creator kind of person who just was still like scrappy, but they're making seven figures and they need to like become a real business. Uh, or actually, no, scrap that. Let's say you took a seven figure business who they had hired a branding person before or whatever. Like they have a professionally designed logo, but it's like not cohesive. It's not very good. Um, the thing that I'm asking myself as I'm thinking about your client base and service offering as it is now is like, would this thing you're describing still benefit those sorts of folks? Would it, would it still benefit people who are doing really well and thus have money to invest? And it sounds like that first one, the like matchstick to catalyze it, that service offering like wouldn't necessarily apply to a successful business. No, that if they're successful, yeah, they need good branding. You know, they just need it to translate that success into visual play. And that's what like the core branding is for. Okay. So yes, I could work with that person, but they don't need to go through my road mapping. Okay. Let me make a note of this. Because what I'm seeing is like these two, these two separate, um, two separate groups of people and those people who you're doing that like match sticks, share the voices, start growing. That is the kind of thing that in order to have a really high effective hourly rate, you're going to have to do like the scaffoldy stuff, like courses, group coaching, et cetera. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But that if you want like 
a fat stack of money in your pocket right now, for example, that might not be the most efficient way to get there. Whereas this uh, like rebrand successful clients, these are just like higher ticket projects that could mm -hmm. easily pay off more. So when we're talking about your steps with marketing, um, when you do your Instagram marketing, do you ever get access to rebrand projects or are you only getting access to those like just getting started kinds of people projects on Instagram? I would say 80% just getting started and 20% um, big projects that I have to like clarity call, work back and forth. Okay, but show me more of what you do. No, 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 you know. Was it's like people are not ready to invest in 3k like it's hard to get them yeah. very few clients are like here's my money let's start which is what i want okay so to tie this back to the scoping to make the most of our remaining minute <laughs> um <clears throat> so now that i have more understanding like we would i would ideally have you think of which you want to focus on the stuff but I think maybe the challenge right now is that if the main market that you have access to is the like lower paying market, the question will soon become if <clears throat> five hours equals one project at 3K, then that essentially like eats into your rates. But it's at least nice to know you can invest that five hours as it is. Uh, but the thing that my mind is thinking of is like, what are the content marketing sorts of things you can do where you can invest those five hours into something that'll send more leads consistently long term. So that's something I want to talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, but for right now, and what you're wanting to scope for today, uh, maybe now that I've just said all this rambly stuff, let's tie it back and like, for today, are you wanting to like think of how to use the five hours better to try to get to those rebrand projects? Are you wanting yeah. to? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, so what are your thoughts or questions on what I've said so far? Um, I don't want to eat up anyone's time, but I I think he, the clarity of just like knowing that there's two people and that there's like higher marketing and lower marketing. Um, I think it's it's great to know that I to make the most of my five hours, it's not getting one like six hundred dollar client, but getting the three thousand dollar client. So like I have to think that when I do marketing, not so much about why, but more about case studies and like, this is what I do. This is the visual branding, not like this is my coaching program. Yeah. And it could be that the coaching program, like given that the coaching audience is the one you have access to, like typically the easier route, because I, I guess I don't know your financial situation. You said you're pretty comfortable, your lifestyle optimized. So typically the route is like you do the freelancing, you do the agency thing because that's easier short-term money and then you'd go into products. But like, that's not always what you have to do. If you already have access to an audience and people like this thing like that could be the route you go. I think we'd have to chat further to think about which you have to go. But I think choosing one that you're going to specialize in as the next step mm -hmm. versus trying to do both is probably mm. what would make the most sense. Mm -hmm. Does, does your sense. gut pull you more towards one or the other if you were to choose one to like really focus on? I love coaching. I love coaching. <laughs> Obviously, it pulls me there because I love helping people, but I also love making money. So, you know, <laughs> I know how to do branding. <laughs> so if you had to pick one, which one would you go with? Like if either could work out. Yeah. Which would you okay. Pick? If both have the same amount of money, I would choose coaching 100%. Um, and what, what amount of money do you want to be making per month? Mm, I would like to start with 10K. Like that's the number that I've reached once and it's the number that I want to maintain. Okay. So maybe what I would have you thinking about is like, think about your like oldest and most successful client who you coached and you were the matchstick and they got going and okay. like, think about what, cause I wish we had more time. We can do a deep dive sometime or something, but, uh, think about that client and think about like the results they've gotten. Like, do you have clients who are running successful businesses now after you've mm -hmm. done this with them? Okay. Yeah. So th think about what maybe, so I don't think you came. I did the case study workshop recently and I'm polishing it up into a course. I think what would be great is if you did a case study interview with them and you mm -hmm. found out like, what did you do past successful client to get from this coaching with me into your successful business state now? Uh, find out what got them from there to there and find out where their challenges are now and wh where they need support next. So basically, like if you can start working through the blueprint and doing Trojan horse interviews with your past clients and finding out where they need support, 
It may be that your product ladder is that your like top of funnel product is cheap and it's like, get someone started. And then as they become more successful, you have services that are more relevant to them that are paying off higher. And so it's like your top of funnel is like cheap courses to help people start their businesses. And then mid or bottom of funnel is like more specialized services to help them grow their businesses. And then the very bottom is like your core branding projects that are like icing on the cake. Um, so yeah, so maybe your homework is to just kind of think in this vein. So think about case studies of past clients who are doing well, interview them, go through the blueprint, do Trojan horse interviews with them. Mm -hmm. This isn't all for one week, but this is, I think, something to focus on if it sounds good to you. That's great. While I take notes, do you have any questions? Me? Not really. I'm still going to do five hours of marketing, though. I'm going to keep that goal as well because it really worked. Cool. And and yeah, I would challenge you to like layer on. Maybe you don't have to keep layering stuff on, but either shave it down to like four hours and do two or or just add two. But like maybe an hour or two a week of like thinking about this case study angle, maybe interviewing past clients. Thank Sorry you. to go over, guys. All right. So there's the session. I'll be excited to see how she does in the coming weeks and see what she reports back with. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, leave good reviews, all those things. And as a reminder, if you want to get coaching just like this, you can join the DYF Accelerator and your membership includes one-on-one -on -one live video coaching calls with me every week where we'll do basically what I just did with Maya here. Uh, these Office hours blocks happen on Wednesdays, typically. I've got two blocks a day, and you book a 20-minute one-on-one session within them where we connect on your goals, challenges, and kind of map you into the next steps. Uh, we cap the accelerator at 200 members to ensure everyone can get some direct one-on-one -on -one support like this. If you want to follow Maya's business, you can learn more about her at her uh, business website, which is Blank Page Labs. That is blankpagelab.io so singular blank page lab .io, or on Instagram at instagram.com slash Maya Ben. So that's M-A-I-A-B-E-N. That's her Instagram. Thanks and uh, see you in the next episode.